I'm Tim Herrera with the Sacramento County Office of Education here with another Teacher of the Year profile. We're speaking with Orly Camp, who is one of two Teachers of the Year for the Twin Rivers Unified School District. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell us where you teach and tell us what you teach. Um, I teach at Hillsdale Elementary School, which is in the Twin Rivers Unified School District. I'm a kindergarten teacher. I've been teaching kindergarten for, I'm starting my 11th year, mm. but I've been teaching for 33 years. Mm. And I've done all the grades with combinations, five, six combo, two, three combo. And I've taught self-contained self special ed also. Wow, so you've, done, you've I, done everything almost. I have, and I love them all. <laughs> loved all the grades. So what's the challenge uh, with kindergarten? I mean, uh, what is the big difference between that and some of the other grade levels you've taught? 11 years is a long time. 11 years is a long time. Uh, when I first started teaching, kindergarten scared me. I didn't want to be with kindergartners. I wanted the big kids. And I've always said, well, what changed me instead of what I always said is when my children became teenagers, I wanted the little kids. And um, the challenge of the, of the little kindergartners is Sometimes communication, but uh, they're just neat kids. I mean, we just go in and have fun and we learn each day. So what is it about kindergarten that, that, that you like now that in the beginning kind of scared you? Well, I was afraid just the little ones. I thought when I first started teaching that, oh, kindergartners can't learn. They're little ones. They're gonna be crying every day. They, you know, they can't sit, they can't learn. Well, I was totally wrong. Mm -hmm. They they learn so well. Um, sometimes you might have the crying, but we have crying in many times in other classrooms too. But they 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 come in enthusiastic that they want to learn. Each day is a new day, and they just love being in school, which makes me I love being in school. So we're just this great team working together. And, and, you're, and that's the age where you're not only teaching them academics, but also socialization. Yes. And, and uh, you know, how, not only how to hold a pencil, but how to, to be nice to somebody, how to share, all those things. All those things. Of, and I, I, I say sometimes they need to find their voice. We're talking about learn how to get along with kids or with other friends. Um, within the classroom every day, we have, what I call it my job time where they have to work with a partner. They get to choose. They get to do, you know, whether it's building, painting, um, Play-Doh, writing, computers. They're with a partner. They have to learn to communicate, share. Um, if they don't agree with something, instead of saying, teacher, 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 talk it out before coming to me as a solving of a problem. And that carries over onto the playground. So many times, Instead of saying, well, teacher, he looked at me strange, or, you know, they touched me and I didn't want him to touch me. Well, find your voice. What's your voice? You can say what? No, don't do that. I don't like that. And as a receiving party, you have to honor that. If someone says no to you, no means no. And in kindergarten, they're learning that. And then it's like, okay, I'm sorry. And then continue on. And the other part is many times they're very forgiving. It's like, okay, now let's go back and have some more fun. Mm -hmm. You know, all that little part of just saying, oh, I'm sorry. It just takes care of it for little kindergartners. They don't hang on to some of these other issues that maybe we do as we get older. So with the establishment of the Common Core now and, you know, really trying to gauge expectations and what students are learning and explaining what they're learning, how, how has that changed how you've done things in your classroom? Well, with the Common Core coming, I, I'm, I'm excited about it because you get to teach across the curriculum. It's not, I'm only gonna teach this story at this time and then we're gonna assess at this time. You can bring in sciences and social studies, the arts, the PE, you get to intermingle it. And then you're, you're, you're just, you're assessing. But you're not having to set and do the, all these formal assessments. You can do the informal assessments just by observing with kids. And so with a common core, you know, you could be writing and relating to social studies or relating to science. And I find that exciting compared to just teach this, test this, teach this, touch, uh, test this. So, With Common Core, mm -hmm. um, students have to explain their answers. Yes. What is it like having a kindergartner, you know, teaching them to explain what they know? Well, we start that 
with just our, I, I, with my work, well, I shouldn't say my work, but my... Um, Your teaching partner? No, my teach. I'm, so I've got my smart board. I create lessons on my smart board. Okay. And they have little pictures. And let's say they're listening for the beginning sound of something. They move that picture maybe over to the end, like it's a monkey. They move it over to the end. Okay, why? And then instead of, and they'll have to think and they'll say, well, because monkey starts with, mm, that's the beginning of explaining. And sometimes, like in math, they go up and they explain something. I learned something a few years ago. I had a child who had an answer, and I said, okay, come up, and could you explain that? She didn't do the problem. And I'm thinking it's going to be one way. She totally explained it a total different way. And I went, and all the kids, their mouths dropped. And I said, you're right. I never thought of it that way. And if we weren't doing the common cards, you know, expect them to learn a certain way, how would that child have come out with that? So the kids are beginning to do that. We do this in small groups on the floor where we're doing, you know, maybe I ask a question, they share their answers within the group, and then, they, then you know, we choose someone to be a speaker for that group for that particular question. So they're getting to be more verbal instead of just sitting, writing the answer, sitting. They're beginning to share and talk even as kindergartners. And what does that do to the student and, and, and the student's you know, demeanor and feeling of maybe self-worth when they can explain to you how they arrived at an answer? It empowers them. They just feel so proud of themselves. That smile on their face like, I did it. And the thing about it was sometimes the answer, they have an answer that maybe isn't right, but they explained how they got to that answer. And you can see where the thinking was coming from. And it's perfect, and it, it just empowers that student, and and the other kids just like, hey, that's that's good, and it's not judgmental. So, kids, the shy ones, not to be afraid of coming up and giving an answer, because many times, and I was a shy student in school growing up, I did not want to speak up in class because I didn't want to be considered wrong. So I'd rather just. But here, they're just excited for the answers. To give because they're comfortable. There's nothing saying no. You're wrong. It's like okay, and I like how you explain that, and then we continue on, and so they are just excited. So then students aren't afraid to try. No, see my philosophy, and it's with the kids in the classroom, is to try. There could be no. All I ask in my class is try. And that's when a, when a kid just, a child says, I don't know. I said, and what's, what, what, do, what do I want? And the kids go, just to try. And I said, that's right. How can I teach you if you don't try? I don't know what you know. I can't read, you may think I can read your mind, but I can't read your mind. Mm -hmm. And so that's the only thing. They said, you just want me to try. I said, that's right. And so they have that in kindergarten. And you just nailed it. That was, that's the main philosophy within my classroom, to try. And to make a mistake, it's okay. And they know that. It's okay to make a mistake. Hmm. Because we learn from mistakes. So what motivated you to be a teacher? That goes way back. Um, when I was young, I had a, a special needs uncle. And I learned from my parents back, he was born in the 1930s. Special needs kids were not to be seen or heard. And they were either kept in the house or they were you know, put in maybe state hospitals. And school was hard because he would go to school and he was picked on, he was beat up. Teachers would lock him in closets. And this was in the farm communities here in California. My mother would get in trouble because she'd unlock the closets and send him home. And it was a fourth grade teacher that let him play during class time. And then when the kids went out to play, she brought him in to teach him. About halfway through that school year, my grandfather said, you can't read yet, so I need you in the fields. And so he went and started working in the fields. Mm -hmm. So when he was, um, I was a young person, he was a, an adult, special needs adult, I worked with him. You know, we just started, you know, simple communication, simple words, me just making letters, him working, and we just bonded. And I thought, wow, you know, I'm able to work and, and teach my uncle. And yet I felt very privileged because he would go with his brothers or his sister and his parents, but never with any of the nephews or nieces except for me. And so that led me into education. Mm -hmm. 
because I could make I made a difference in his life. And here you are today. And here I am today. That's We've been right. speaking with Oralee Camp, who is one of two teachers of the year for the Twin Rivers Unified School District. Congratulations and thanks for talking with us. Thank you very much.